I think that what you do is you don't quantize gravity, you harmonize gravity. Gravity is the observer. Gravity is the observer. Gravity is the observer. We say, well, when you make an observation, well, who's doing the observation? Is Joe doing the observation? Is Jamie doing the observation? Who's doing this observation? Who has the right to use the second rule for collapsing the state vector with Schrodinger's cat and all entanglement weirdness? Well, I think it's gravity. I think that part of the story is, is that gravity is the observer through something called a pullback operation. And when you realize that, you realize that you don't naively quantize gravity the way you quantize everything else. In fact, gravity is the only field living on the successor to space-time, if I'm correct. There are two spaces called X and Y. All the cool stuff in here, the electrons, the quarks that make up everything that you and I are, is living on Y, except for the metric, the rulers and the protractors, which lives on X, which is how you keep gravity separate. And the unification is the unification of these two things in a structure called a bundle, H-O-P-F. You are looking at the most important object in the universe. What? Discovered by Heinz Hopf in 1931, Hopf fiber bundles pop up in at least eight different physics situations. So what you are seeing is, as legendary physicist Roger Penrose put it, an element of the architecture of our world. This story about space-time engineering, where you don't use the Einstein field equations because you're using the successor theory rather than, in the Einstein theory, the entire planet was pulling on you when you needed to go pee. And your legs, I mean, you're obviously buff, you're fit, you just pulled against an entire planet to get out of your chair, and you won. That's how weak gravity is. That's how space and time is barely bent by all of Earth. Now, you're going to tell me about an Alcubierre uh, warp drive where, okay, no, here's what's going on. The ship is inside of this little bubble of warping. No, it isn't. If somebody's space-time engineering and they can get here from very far away, they're not using general relativity in the standard model, my friends. They're using a successor theory, and we have become pussies. We are not going to look at successor theories because we've all learned the lesson that everybody who tries to bet against the standard model loses. Everybody who bets against general relativity loses. It's all just spinorial. It's all just spinorial. It's all just spinorial. There's a concept of, a, of, of, of spinners, which is natural if you have a manifold with length and angle. But the structure that's choreographing them is beyond time. Well, it can be called into time as it is now, but it is not of time. Once its dance is over, it slips back into the structured silence and waits, without waiting, until it once again attracts the active light of consciousness. I do not know how that can possibly be the case. And yet, there it is on your screen. Look at it go. <laughs> what a world. Where do we go from here on GU in terms of 
somebody mm -hmm. is going to have to actually grasp the ideas inside of GU. Grasp the ideas inside of GU.